Hello everyone. We are coming back uh, with the uh, with the next uh, panel discussion, uh, which is called Job Revolution with AI. Basically, what I wanted to say that uh, the only constant in life is change. Uh, what what is said with Heraclitus? Uh, basically, he was a Greek philosopher. Uh, with every big uh, industrial revolution, we start talking about how much technology will change our lives, the nature of jobs and incomes. Uh, the fourth and fifth industrial revolution are not different with this topic. Uh, in this panel, we are going to tackle the topic of how AI is changing the very nature of uh, jobs and how we perceive it in what are the consequences, basically, of this change in, the, uh, in a bit wider scale, uh, such as job economy, basic income, uh, income, etc. Uh, today with us, we are, going, we are having, like I said, two very close friends of our uh, data science conference and franchise. Uh, Tomislav Križan, uh, who is CEO of Atomic Intelligence, a uh, Croatian, uh, uh, Croatian AI company, and as well, uh, Nean Božić, who is CEO and founder of SmartCat, which, uh, which is a Serbian AI company. Uh, I would like uh, to invite you both to join me in, the, uh, in this session, and we can start with the introduction. Hello both to both of you. Hello. Uh, I would like, for the beginning, I would like to personally thank you once again to, for accepting this call. I think that uh, two of you are, uh, uh, we already think that, that we did one uh, one panel uh, like two years ago with uh, both of you, and that was like a great mix. I think that both of you have great energy, so I, I think that this panel will be very, very interesting. And we are going to tackle a lot of interesting topics. So uh, without further ado, I would like to have, uh, for the start, uh, for both of you, uh, three questions. Uh, first one is maybe we can start with Nana. Uh, how much AI are you using to help you with your daily life and daily job? Uh, we will come later to this topic, uh, AI versus intelligent ass assistance. But I would say that uh, I have less and less time being uh, being a CEO. So I'm always I'm a big fan of automation and optimization. So I'm using a lot of uh, tools and uh, tricks to make the most out of the time I have. Uh, for each segment of my life, for family, for uh, for the job, and for everything, and in, in order to do this, um, you need uh, a lot of help. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that I have a company that is uh, creating AI solutions. So when I don't have some uh, some some gadget, I can always ask uh, guys to to make something. So we are using a lot of uh, things on job uh, to. Um, predict stuff uh, to automate uh, boring processes in order to free our uh, creative thinking. Um, so I would say uh, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big uh, adopter of uh, intelligent assistance in my life. Okay, uh, Thomas, so maybe if you can refer also to this question. Just yeah, to... I would say I'm lazy, so I use a lot of AI <laughs> <laughs> to remove those boring tasks. No, I like to spend my time uh, similar like Nana to be a creative where we can be creative and whatever is repetitive to try to do automation on top of it but uh, also to answer on that question of how much AI do you really use uh, the other question comes to the mind uh, knowingly or unknowingly because we use a lot of AIs uh, recently even without knowing so one of the best AI solutions I would say that helped a lot of us is really good spam filters. Now we have it all the, the Outlook 365, Gmails, etc. Last year, this time we would get uh, hundreds of spams per day. Now we get few of them because all of the good work they are doing on that space. And it's not only that. You get like um, uh, what is your pending task for a day based on all the emails you got. So all of those small tips and tricks which help you, regardless what you also use uh, during the days. During the day, other like advisors, etc. Yeah, and uh, I would like to ask you to, to continue with you, maybe because uh, uh, Nand already uh, reflected on that how he has a, a much and uh, smaller, smaller amount of time to be CEO. But Tomislav, uh, are you afraid that maybe AI will replace you in your position? And uh, do you think that AI will be uh, more or less successful as a CEO of your company? <laughs> maybe as a CEO, but not as a, like a chief innovation officer. So uh, <laughs> let's make the difference there. No, uh, uh, I would say that AI can help us to do a lot of things and find new insights, but it can't uh, always uh, do good with uh, creativity. And this is something where uh, people still shine. And this is why we need to leverage on AI to help us 
uh, and get some free time back so that we can be creative and uh, unload unnecessary burden and work to AI itself. I know that um, some of the things, uh, it's not just that AI is driving a lot of changes now, even the pure technology is driving a lot of changes. Of and to be honest, most of them are badly on some aspects <laughs> and it's due the uh, people uh, laziness aspect not so much that lifelong learning but uh, to be honest there is a lot of people who tend to be a little bit lazy when they get free time not to do something uh, I wouldn't say innovate even doing uh, some hobbies or something else so reading like you are constantly doing etc those help you evolve but if you are constantly just watching something and uh, not reacting or doing yourself, like uh, even previous panelists said, try to do something, start with something, even if it's a minimum, it does not need to be AI, just do something, it will help you greatly. Uh, maybe if you can uh, then also reflect on this question regarding, uh, do you think that AI will be possible to replace you in your position? And if so, how much time do you need, uh, it will be possible to do something like that? It would be great because uh, that would mean that I have more time on my uh, on my slide. But I, I really don't believe uh, um, yeah. uh, being in a company and uh, leading the company is uh, essentially you're working with people, and people like to work with people. And biggest portion of uh, our time, I don't know what Tomislav says, but biggest portion of our time is dealing with uh, other other employees in your company, understanding their problems, uh, understanding their life, uh, creating. Uh, uh, create work-life balance that makes sense in order to do the job, but also in order for them to have free time on their slate. And uh, I really don't see uh, in the near future um, any AI uh, replacing this uh, emotional, empathical, human touch uh, part of uh, part of uh, our jobs. Uh, that's why I think uh, having a, a bunch of assistance and doing data-driven decisions uh, really makes sense. Uh, so applying. AI to have a uh, easier time doing uh, any kind of decision making really makes sense and I think um, there is a big potential uh, to help us in our job. Well, this this sounds interesting and I would just like to also maybe if you can just re reflect on the question do you believe like for the start maybe before we start with uh, more in-depth uh, talking about it but do you believe that AI is really revolutionizing the definition of uh, the very definition of a job? Uh, definitely. Uh, I mean, the whole adaptation of uh, computer technology, I think uh, it is hard to uh, imagine any any job uh, without uh, using any, any kind of uh, gadget and computer. And I think uh, um, AI or any, any software with data is the next thing. I think a lot of uh, decision making is being based uh, on data because previously we were... Uh, uh, we were slaves of a uh, few people who had experience and uh, they had a hunch to do the decision making and now we have uh, this uh, big help of uh, tools and tricks to do the decision making based, uh, based on data. Whether this is uh, clever or uh, it is scary, we will see <laughs> towards the end of our panel. But um, <laughs> generally, I think, uh, I think uh, it is changing the, the job landscape. Okay, uh, yeah. but in the okay, Tomislav, you would like to reflect? Yeah, yeah, definitely it is changing and uh, it is changing rapidly, not just on uh, decision making, but also what you can achieve and what you can do with uh, AI or change with uh, AI in the background. We had that uh, like in the, when the uh, IT revolution happened in the uh, 60s. When a lot of people did afraid about changing of the jobs or uh, that uh, robots will replace them. Well, well, we still have that recurring team uh, 60 years later uh, that uh, robots will replace us, but uh, unfortunately they are not coming to replace us. Uh, what happens is that people are getting new opportunities and um, even from those 60 years ago when they started to do some type of automation, all the human knowledge jumped and evolved on much more rapid scale than it's evolved to uh, until then so this is what we see as potential benefits but also there is some drawbacks which we, we may uh, touch a little bit later during this yeah, of, course. Yeah. Uh, of course of course that, 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 that is basically what you said I think that will be on, uh, that will be one of the things that it's very important to attack on this uh, panel but like I said uh, the next thing uh, the next uh, let's say uh, part of this uh, panel I would like to go to jobs and task definition in a power century basically 
Uh, and in the modern definition, AI can be defined as an AI as a peer, AI as a mentor, AI as assistant, AI as a colleague, and we can go go on and on and on, basically, because it has a lot, a lot of different, like like uh, Neandal already said, basically. Of course, we are not talking about general artificial intelligence and robots, like you you have mentioned, because people when talking about robots, mostly they are talking about general artificial intelligence, actually. Uh, some people say that we are, for, uh, let's say, uh, AGI, we are at least, 10, somebody said even 50 years ahead. So maybe in 50 years we can uh, rep uh, replace, the, uh, repeat this panel and say, okay, uh, did the robot really replace us? But uh, uh, the point is that uh, AI is changing the very nature of our job and we agree on that and that's something that, that I'm totally, I'm uh, happy to see that it is coming. Uh, my first question for Ned is, uh, do you think that AI will change the essence of an employee's task? And uh, what is their job role? Uh, and maybe if you can just maybe relate to the what they're doing in SmartCat and how, how the job role in SmartCat has changed in, in like, let's say 10 years ago, five years ago, and now. Uh, yeah, we are constrained. Uh, uh, landscape is changing rapidly, uh, but I think uh, being true engineer and understanding concepts uh, is really essential and then you are uh, you're robust uh, against the change uh, because now it is technology one in few years it will be technology two technology three uh, uh, concepts and uh, understand engineering is uh, essential for our jobs so we are trying to look at uh, people who under really understand the uh, depth of being an engineer instead of uh, uh, hiring specific uh, role because we are witnessing that uh, uh, there is a shorter and shorter span of uh, some role that is uh, that is being uh, uh, next best thing or really I mean some roles did some some jobs job definitions didn't exist a few years ago I'm afraid how um, academic uh, studies will look like because you're uh, doing something for six years and uh, then realize in 10 years that uh, what you finished does not exist anymore uh, so uh, yeah we are we are entering exciting exciting times um, but probably each uh, each industry will get uh, improved and revolutionized but concepts will stay the same um, lawyers for example uh, my wife is a lawyer so this is a good yeah. example i think there is a lot of uh, repetitive uh, things uh, there when building a building a framing um, a contract but uh, still i think that um, you will need someone to check what is being generated and uh, someone to speak and gather requirements in order to apply n n template to the specific case so i think uh, uh, still, we will need um, we will need uh, oversight. Yeah, I agree on that, and we'll come to the uh, lawyers, and I will ask you a, a bit in different because I know a lot of cases with lawyers and what they are doing, basically, uh, and it's, uh, some of the let's say fails because uh, they were totally related to the technology without checking out what is happening. <laughs> like, yep. There was like there was one case from uh, from Geolytics basically last year, two years ago on the conference. They have like already have ten thousand papers, and they didn't check that uh, there is like two two different languages in one page, like Chinese and English, and they didn't understand that they need also to Chinese to translate. And in court, you need to do the both documents in the front. So basically, ten thousand of documents that has everyone everyone had one thousand pages <laughs> need to be done from the beginning. That was like six months uh, of delay for the project. But basically, Tomislav, I'd like to ask you, um, before we go to AI jobs through different industries, uh, I have in mind that AI can uh, accelerate a lot of things and help us to do more with less time, which is all the definition of uh, uh, lazy, but also smart people. <laughs> do you think that AI can foster some progressive ideas such as six hour uh, working time or a uh, lifelong learning, for example? Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, forget AI for this aspect. Uh, six hour working time is something which any industry can benefit. And uh, we already had this type of uh, research done in Scandinavia countries. And what they found out is that first of all, and it's on, across all the industries, what is found out is that uh, during those six hours, you will definitely be more productive. First of all, you are never productive eight hours per day, uh, however you work. So uh, having a lot of breaks in meantime, doing learning or whatever, talking with your uh, colleagues, etc. Spend you spend more time on it, but uh, really productive work, maybe three, four hours 
working hours in a, in a day where you develop something, if you call it like a development. So what they found out is that uh, with those six hours, they managed to lower uh, any healthcare as expenditure because people were less sick, uh, less uh, well, yeah, less other issue like mental issues, like uh, any physical issues during those six hours work. Because if you work in some uh, physically uh, intense environment, you get tired, and you, then the mistakes start to happen, and you get injured, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The only drawback which they found out is that in the service industries, they needed additional shift because those service industries need now, uh, still need to be available 24-7. And if you work six hours, you need a fourth shift to have the additional spread to be uh, across those 24 hours. And this is like a medic medical uh, firefight uh, fighting, uh, military, police, etc. Those which need to be available constantly. So only in those areas they found that there is an increase in expenditure because you need additional people. But everything else benefit from a uh, six hour work. But realistically looking from both Nenad's company and mine, I wouldn't say that uh, people are working eight hours uh, per day or six or what. Some, sometimes they work two hours, sometimes they will work 10, etc. They They will try to um, optimize their uh, work and a uh, private life. And uh, private life is something which uh, leads you mostly how you will perform also on work. If you are satisfied there and you uh, fix everything what you need to fix at home, it will be much easier on your job related place. So even six yeah. hours is something which is maybe boundary, but again, it is yeah, for basically. company who has limits. Yeah, basically what you're saying, uh, and I think that with uh, the help of AI and uh, like like I said, uh, not only monitoring from the side of like CEO, I know that it's very important, like people are, don't, don't uh, I'm also like CEO of one small company that's on the extent conference, but uh, it's not about like uh, that people are working six hours per day or something. It, it's very uh, important and to monitor their work all the time. It's about to monitor uh, like when you have more than one employee, when you have like at least five employees, you need uh, you need some help to see if uh, the, the KPIs and goals you have uh, set back and tasks that you have uh, developed that they are being done in the end. It's not important if they are doing two, three, four, or ten hours per day. Like okay, if ten hours per day, that means that you're you are you have uh, established a wrong wrong system in the beginning. You need to, to change something to have more employees, for example, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But okay, sometimes you need to work ten hours because you're it's very competitive. Sometimes you have two hours, like I said. But on the weekly level, something like that, I think that AI can help there, for example, for my mm -hmm. point of view, that AI can help in uh, having a, a monitoring, but not monitoring from the standpoint of CEO, but uh, yourself as employee to be mm -hmm. to understand how much did you work and did you work enough? Did you uh, uh, set your goals? Did, did their expectations are satisfied or not? To so try to improve yourself. So from that point of view, I, think, I can think that AI can help for a lot. Not Agreed. only AI, but analytics and etc. That that help uh, as like I said, uh, like Nan said, AI is assistant basically. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, without taking more time on this, because we can go through this uh, through different industries, which I think that is very interesting. Uh, Tomisla, my question for you, because you have a uh, beside a strong, a strong uh, tech background, I know that you as a child start working com uh, computers. I, I have read your uh, your biography I think ten times because all the time. I I'm putting the same biography on the website, but uh, I know that you are, a, let's say, a fond of the music at least. I know that you own a lot of guitars, uh, and uh, but do you think that AI can replace the artist completely? Uh, I would say that we need to define a role of the artist. Um, if we talk about the role of the artist who is a performer, like student musicians, etc., then yes. If we talk about creativity, when you create a new genre or a new uh, style completely, whatever the style may, may be, either in a painting or music or even literature, then no, because that type of creativity, we are still far, far away. So replacing somebody who is doing work and based on previous learning, because all the AI is done on something what they observed and learned previously, so they are not inventing the wheel. Uh, yeah, from that perspective, I do see them uh, replacing something and it will definitely help in, uh, in some of the areas, but uh, inventing completely new genre, definitely no. Okay. This is still where and we will foster. And one, one additional question to this, uh, have you heard about AI that has completed Beethoven 10th uh, Symphony last year? And, and what do you think about it? 
No, th th this is really good. So for one of the conferences, what I did, uh, I showed you the guitar. So what I did, I did play around a few notes. And uh, from the playing few notes, you can also immediately get uh, what are the notes, etc., digitalized. And when you get yeah. that one, you can apply style of any musician to see how those notes will then uh, uh, essentially be if Hendrix is playing those notes or if, uh, I don't know, Jimmy Page or somebody else is playing the same notes with a different touch and feel. But you mentioned about uh, Beethoven Symphony. Did you heard about uh, Lost Tapes of Club 27? No. Yes, no. So this is something which is done from AI perspective, generated uh, complete music and lyrics, like two AI en engines for a music and for a lyric, uh, for, for all of those who died at age 27 musicians, like uh, Hendrix, uh, like uh, Jim Morrison, Janis Joplin, Amy um, uh, Winehouse, etc. So all of those uh, based on their style, AI generated music and AI generated the lyrics, and they, they applied uh, some additional steps on on top of it to even uh, do overlay of the uh, sound well uh, voice because AI can't generate voice at the moment so you still uh, hire a professional musician but you did generate the lyrics and this project was done to uh, essentially something like AI for good to show the people issues right. with mental illness which can happen mostly uh, in musicians and those practices so all the club 27 died <laughs> of overdose etc based uh, on their f mental state etc so this is a good approach what ai can do and uh, let's say elevate awareness about some of the issues as well at the same time besides providing a good music uh, to itself okay and i'd like to also to, to continue with this uh, do you think that ai can replace some traditional uh, roles such as let's say um, uh, marketeers or uh, lawyers if not why if yes or what will be the role of humans in it? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I still think that uh, it can replace portion of their work, but I uh, still see it, see it as a necessary part, at least in near future, we are talking about what you mentioned, 10 to 50, 50 years uh, um, for human to be, to be pretty much part of it. Uh, we have for years uh, autopilot, for example, when you're flying a plane, which is essentially an AI, right? And uh, uh, no one did, re uh, pilots are still in the cockpit. Um, you have uh, like uh, people uh, checking whether on the industrial lines, uh, uh, manufacturing uh, by robot was a good thing, essentially quality control. So I see this quality control as a, as a, as essential role uh, in whatever industry, be, being lawyer or marketer, as an essential thing um, for years to come. But then um, that leaves a question: How many open job positions there would be? Um, probably, if we apply more AI, AI we should invent more jobs uh, for people doing the work, or many people will need to uh change the job so uh this is this is for me bigger question than um uh would uh, there be still uh, people in uh, job roles that we have today yeah but maybe like like we talked before with six hours maybe there will be no, more people who will be working of course the, 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 of course there is a portion of uh, what is the profit margin etc but like, let's not go yet into that mm -hmm. what i want to ask you as, as a sub question for this one is uh what is your stand on ai technology under the umbrella of human in the loop uh mm -hmm. do you think that this is maybe a more realistic approach and maybe if you can explain to the people who are not fond of this uh, term to maybe explain to them in a few sentences what does this, yep. this mean yeah, I heard it first uh, on a conference in Spain uh, four years ago uh, from uh, people working on uh, on um, Safari Books uh, library. Uh, basically, they are using AI to categorize a book based on the title content and various features. But uh, they they have like controlling person who is checking whether categorization is done right or not and if uh, it is not done right they are changing the category to the right one this information gets stored in the database and retraining loop uh, is up uh, is adding this knowledge to the to the ai doing categorization so basically you have continuous uh, learning process 
and the uh, whole a, a whole categorization engine is becoming smarter and smarter o over time um, i really like the approach and we are using it a lot in smarket uh, uh, it is targeting um, two things at least maybe maybe okay. more uh, first thing would be start with something without data set because essentially you can uh, move to the full manual mode and start labeling each record and then um, when you label enough, uh, then you can say, okay, now, now I will label and check every 10th record, every 100th record, and you are creating data set along, uh, along the way instead of waiting for a bunch of examples in order to train the machine learning algorithm. And second, the thing that it, it is addressing, and I think it is really, really important topic is uh, being confident in, in, in uh, into this uh, black box that we call AI, because AI is, even for us who are working in this industry, black box, uh, imagine someone non-technical, uh, they're treating it as a black box, and uh, when you give them access to do the quality control and check, they are building confidence that this engine is working right, and uh, when they are more and more confident, they will, uh, then you can apply more and more automation and let more automatic answers uh, go through. So I am big uh, fan of uh, human in the loop, big fan of intelligent assistance. Uh, not uh, not a fan so much of uh, general purpose AI because I cannot imagine how it will be look like. I watched too many movies with robots and uh, stuff uh, that went wrong to be a fan of it. Uh, but um, yeah, this is this is it and we apply it a lot. For example, we created the customer support automation and this customer support automation is uh, when machine is confident that the answer is right by 80% or more, uh, answer is going through immediately. When it is below 80% and above 50%, it is giving hint to the person who is manually approving and it, if it is below 50 percent then it is full manual um work so i think this plays nicely with uh with uh short sites we have currently in ai okay uh, and uh, uh what i wanted to ask uh, tomislav uh first of all you uh can you see that ai may replace some of the vital functions let's say in job position positions such as i don't know doctors when talking about doctor surgeon for example mm -hmm. judges or teachers if yes uh, in what time frame if not mm -hmm. uh, why and would you like to see this in, uh, happen sometime in the future uh because i try to go multidisciplinary and uh, read every day and talk with the people across the board i would say yes definitely for this one especially well like yesterday we had the first fully autonomous uh, surgery done by ai so it was just uh, watching from the people over watching from the doctors uh from a side but they didn't touch anything it, it, it was completely done and i think it was lung surgery and it was com completely successfully done, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, with minimal decisions, uh, uh, etc., because it can do much more precise work. But uh, I would just go a little bit step back. Uh, why uh, I think that maybe doctors will be also one of the first who will embrace this, especially surgeon uh, related. Uh, one of the good legislative uh, came, I think, beginning of 2019 in Florida where they said if you have ability and you are a doctor and you have ability to get a second opinion by AI and you don't uh, take it into consideration, you may be liable under the law. Why? Because uh, AI is trained on much more wider sample than uh, a single physician. So they'll definitely have better information. And again, doctor will be a human in a loop who will evaluate their result and have something as a even a step forward to minimize uh, unnecessary expenditure on some of the maybe uh, checkups before they make any decisions or even yep. to tailor what they need to do before they start with the treatments. From the other side, I did talk with uh, one of the deans in uh, Canada on medical uh, college, and they told us that today it's quite hard to get a really good surgeon from the college, not because of the knowledge, but because people are lacking a physical touch now, a physical skill, 
uh, those micro movement which we as a kids played a lot of with the small things uh, and different DIY, DIYs and build this and build that etc you, you played around but this motoric skills is now quite um, I don't know it's mostly on the fingers not so much on a, a motoric movement and this is what uh, becomes a quite issue with uh, surgeons and this is also why there is a completely new niche of trying to do all of those uh, surgeon robots quite a lot or even if they are uh, moved by surgeons through those they have a large uh, movement of their hands and then there is a microscopic movement of the scalpel etc so this is why it's happening because of it and from the other side what we also observed uh, up till 1919 and unfortunately 1919 this is it looks the year where everything goes wrong not just visually but globally uh, up to 1990 uh, the world observed that uh, human intelligence goes about one percent every two to three years from 1919 onwards it started to decline and it started to decline uh, because of uh, technology and again what i said laziness which you didn't use to learn something new what we observed in the us people are now throwing the text in google translate not to translate it but to read instead of them and if you don't read you start to uh, lose your brain cells if you don't write with a pen it, which is also a uh, well established fact that uh, why the easterns are now much better in the math and uh, all those not just creativity but also all of those ai driven stuff why the china is much more uh, prominent than the us even if you look the us most of the aspect is uh, chinese uh, scientists is because they have that elaborate writing etc and that that fine rhetoric skill if you take paper and pen and do a lot of of it you'll be more equipped and more intelligent at the end so um digital assistants like Nena already said they are happening we already see uh, like a teacher assistants which are ai driven and yes it is in uh, japan for now but it will come because if you have somebody who is uh, fairly to judge and conver uh, convey the uh, topic, it will be much more better for acquiring the knowledge than if you have some random person who is jumping around and you don't ho know how they come to be a teacher. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted maybe to uh, to ask you maybe uh, what is your stand about? Okay, we, we cover surgeon, but maybe judges or teachers. Do you think that this is realistic? Would you like to see it? Not see it? uh for traditionally let's say vital function job positions yeah uh, i just wanted to add to the previous question uh yeah. we were working for embryo selection uh, assistant for ivf uh, and uh, in papers uh, a lot of uh, attention is brought to the fatigue of uh, people doing the work uh, when you are tired uh, you are less uh, your, your ability to spot details is uh, lower and i think this is the this is the problem where a digital assistant can help and um, whether it is lawyer whether it is teacher whether it is doctor wherever you have this uh, uh, two things uh, i would say being tired uh, and being tired to reason about a bunch of different uh, factors uh, to make a decision plus this collective knowledge that thomas mentioned you are not uh, that today you have ability to collectively uh, gather decisions of uh, all teachers uh, around the globe instead of uh, being on your own i think these are uh, these are job positions where um, this uh, uh, this type of assistant can can really help I think uh, some kind of collective knowledge uh, when teaching anyone can help for sure. Uh, mm, you should be just humble enough uh, to accept that you are not the smartest person uh, on the world and uh, let uh, this collective knowledge help you out when kids are asking hard questions uh, or uh, when uh, your customer is asking hard questions. and. Um, yeah, I know that process uh, for a lawyer, for example, you need to be assistant of somebody and uh, um, you don't get enough knowledge because uh, uh, anyone who is a good lawyer guards his knowledge without, uh, without will to share it with uh, new and upcoming uh, young lawyers. So having uh, some kind of uh, trainer uh, would be really cool if uh, we can get uh, first uh, 
data and knowledge uh, collectively from from people i mean it will make uh, the whole uh, whole um competitiveness uh, much more fair everybody then could uh, potentially uh, grab the same uh, knowledge and they will have same starting point yeah okay uh, i would just like to refer to, the, to jump to the job markets because like i said i think that we will uh, we will have a little bit more than 45 we will uh, we will let's say uh, take five or more minutes of your time but first Nant, i would like to ask you regarding creation of new jobs as destroying old jobs this will be mentioned in the beginning i think it's very important to address this uh, this uh, this part uh, a few years ago, data scientist was named as the sexiest job of 21st century, which was very cool for the conference that's called Data Science Conference to be <laughs> pronounced. But uh, what do you think that will be the sexiest job, let's say, three years from now? And uh, maybe even to go a little bit further, what job would you like to see that your kid to learn someday to be to become in the future? Mm, I don't know really, uh, but uh, generally what I see is that people are uh, are living uh, faster and faster and I think uh, you see that mental health is a big thing uh, right now. So uh, I would say uh, anything uh, that um, helps us uh, live quieter and, uh, and, and uh, with more calm would uh, be definitely something uh, uh, which we, which would be a new sexy job uh, if uh, someone can teach me how to how to um, I don't know yeah, okay. make more time uh, to shut down uh, notifications for uh, for a couple of hours during the day uh, be unavailable again go to the go to the countryside and really uh, move away from uh, everything that surrounds us uh, I think uh, because. Uh, being surrounded with data has uh, benefits, but it has problems. And then uh, I think a uh, job that will guard us from these uh, notifications, data over overwhelming and uh, all other stuff would, would be definitely next best thing. Okay, uh, Tomislav, a question for you is a bit different. Which jobs mm -hmm. do you think will be extinct five years from now because of AI? And maybe do you think that it's possible to innovate some of these jobs with AI instead of killing them completely? Well, there is always a uh, potential for innovation in any industry. This is what uh, Nenad already mentioned two, three segments ago. Uh, but l let's just focus on the data itself, like uh, even for the industry itself. So w one of the first uh, jobs which will definitely be extinct is a data entry uh, point of the... Well, essentially, you still have a lot of people who are just manually entering the data. You have uh, technologies like... RPAs, etc., et which are now optimizing that part. So this is this will definitely become one of the first is extinct. But as soon as somebody said AI will ki kill the jobs, uh, there there were opening uh, multiple gigafactories in China for AI data labeling. So a lot of those AI needs a label data set to learn something before before it gets applied. In a real world, so it's not, still not something which is uh, widely available. Uh, you still need to add a lot of effort to make something. Like even if you check from OpenAI their GPT-3 for um, natural language processing, on the pure electricity they spent 20 million dollars, and those that's electricity on the training models. Yes, it can do a lot, and this is the reason why they don't allow people to use it because it can create a speech or create uh, chapters or documents which looks like a real like, like somebody really wrote them because it has a knowledge of a language how the language uh, constitutes into sen sentences how the sentences goes into documents or chapters etc etc so it has like a head and tail to uh, to chase it so all of those like cashiers those will definitely extinct. We have already companies who are uh, creating a small computer vision add-ons on top of your uh, carts that you, whatever you pick and put it in, into your cart, it will automatically calculate and it will charge you as soon as you go out. That's simple conversion for existing markets. Or you have Amazon uh, goes where you just go into Amazon yeah. Uh, register to open and take whatever you want. Yes, it has a lot of cameras and it, it tracks what you are picking, returning, where do you return, etc. But it knows what you took and it charges you as soon as you go out. It, it does not care did you put it in your pocket or did you put, you put it in a basket or wherever. 
it knows at every point what did you took. And we, uh, there was already that type of the concept like in the Nordics that you had uh, cashierless uh, stores where you would go inside, buy something, pay it and go out without even seeing anybody working there. And it was before 90s, 1990s and uh, when all the turmoil started in our region and people start to go into Nordics and they started to get free uh, stuff from those markets, they immediately needed to employ cashiers. But yeah, so it, it was different background. There will still be a lot of uh, roles which can be autom uh, uh, done automatically because they are repeatable. And then again, what Neda said, fatigue happens, uh, injuries happens, etc. Those will start to move away instead of uh, something which can do this 24-7 without having a fatigue. But yeah. you'll still have them time to spend on something more creative. And new roles are coming on a daily basis. So uh, five new, uh, five existing jobs which will be cancelled will open 20 new ones. And I see that future will be more interdisciplinary. So you will not focus on one discipline. It will be across more of them. Okay, uh, then I would like to ask you, do, do you think that uh, we can safely say that if uh, every industrial revolution before created more job than destroy old ones, that this will do it that again? Uh, because um, in terms of, uh, are you afraid that we as a society, maybe not uh, as a technology, but society cannot comprehend the accelerated speed of AI power development? No. Yeah, as we, uh, as we said during this call, uh, I think many repetitive tasks uh, will get automated by AI, but that means that uh, it will leave a lot of uh, jobs <laughs> extinct, uh, which means uh, not everybody can learn uh, programming and AI, not everybody went to school for that, uh, not everybody is creative. We are saying that we are automating repetitive tasks to leave uh the the time and uh, and uh, and focus for creative uh, things but some people like a repetitive task because the, this is uh, uh this free 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 up uh, their i don't know uh maybe n not every time you are uh, you are uh, focused to do to, to do creative things so this is this is my biggest uh, questions there are ideas I think you mentioned them and we will cover them like uh, yeah. guaranteed uh, paycheck uh, plus uh, some taxes for uh, automation and stuff like that. But this, this is my biggest question. Um, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, I don't know how we will uh, cope with that. Uh, but this is, this, is big, this is potentially biggest issue. Yeah, basically, what is what I what uh, I was talking with some of the bigger uh, di directors of companies, like we were talking about. They were also having this kind of because we had basically this is the first time in our human development that we have two industrial revolution in a span of ten years. We mm -hmm. had sometimes in a few centuries, in one century we had one, or in a half a century we had one. So basically, once per per uh, per lifetime. This is like and they are afraid of, of what you said. Just they not sure in the coping that and this is the, the uh, this excellent uh, interest for the next. Uh, part uh, before we come to the conclusion is alternative for jobs creation due to technology development basically uh, on the other hand we have we are developing a technology but on the other hand we need to fill the state budget and try to create a job for as many as possible people because we, in the other hand we'll have a problem like social problem social economical problem in the end uh, so we may enjoy normal progression of the society due to this thing in the past months and years uh, there was some proposal a uh, solution for the alternative uh, alternatives for job creation and two most famous one are the concept of basic income and robotization tax that you mentioned before, uh, Nat. So first, I would like Tomislav to, to to ask you, what is your stand on the ba uh, general basic income? Do you think this is a good thing, bad thing? Do you think this this can be become a reality in our lifetime? If yes, mm -hmm. how how much time do you think we need to get to this point? So uh, let's say that we already have, to some extent, uh, through the social benefits, some of the guarantee. Yes. Yeah. Uh, of uh, paychecks, but uh, to be honest, I don't have uh, clear uh, pro or con. I'm maybe leaning more to be for uh, this basic income, but with some of the, let's say, oversight, because still some of the people do not like to work anything, <laughs> and whatever you do, they will uh, try to avoid any type of the work. So should we uh, potentially uh, stipulate that type of uh, uh, 
behavior or should we try to change it and then have everybody to have more than enough for their uh, life and if they want to achieve more they will uh, have ability to work and find some jobs they did try it in uh, again nordics tried this and had really positive results because for everybody who you uh, gathered uh, and had a uh, basic income they still did some of the work on top of it so it was still positive for whole environment not sure how it will be for whole mediterranean area so not just our region here but also everything from spain portugal italy to the greece we like to be a little bit more uh slow down etc so uh, <laughs> getting paycheck without doing anything so we have that uh, famous saying for tourists you just send the money and don't come so that's the best <laughs> tourist so if you send it buy it <laughs> so even with this one um, yeah. i would uh, but uh, at the same time you still need to find that money somewhere uh, either to uh, making more uh, through the taxation which will then be again, again bad thing or adding taxation on this type of automated work like robots etc which which would make sense even Rimas did announce that uh, by 2024 Zagreb will be a first town which will have a robotic taxis uh, mm -hmm. to be honest from technology te technology aspects i don't see an issue i see only legal issues for that type of uh, behavior but still robotic taxis means that it will after them it will come with robotics uh, i don't know train drivers, uh, tram drivers, uh, bus drivers, X, Y, Z, which means that all the drivers will start to immediately be obsolete and you'll need to find a different roles on the market, uh, what they can play, etc. So I would be inclined on that type of uh, basic income. So not sure what Nena thinks, but uh, we need to have uh, people uh, without the borders. <laughs> Let's call them like that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Every, that, that's okay. Then sorry. Everybody who is uh, whose job uh, becomes obsolete, uh, they can do data labeling. That will be a repetitive task uh, job of the future. Because yeah, for I AI, you need you need data labeling, and uh, you can always data label for any kind of paycheck in order yeah. to create all this AI. So that's it's human in a loop, and it's a <laughs> good human because it's a crowd source human in a loop. Yeah, crowdsourcing data labeling. This is this is this is good. This is good thinking. To be honest, like uh, basically, it's it, it can be. Uh, sometimes I need to, to to confess that sometimes I really like to do some stupid repetitive jobs just to clear my head, like to do Excel, but to open Excel. I know that I can optimize that, yeah. but sometimes I don't want to do that because it it uh, basically it. Uh, it 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 turns it it is uh let's say painful but it helps my brain to slow down a little bit yeah. and it's something it, it's cool thing to do so but you need a uh, yeah just one try to clean your uh, toilet so this is something AI want to do it and it will be repeatable <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that that's that's a good thing but uh what I wanted and I to ask you because Bill Gates proposed a few years ago he's the he was the first one to do, do so yep. to be completely honest. I'm not always fond of Bill Gates, but for this one, I, I am. Uh, that for every job that was canceled due to robotization, of automa automa uh, automatization, now we can say AI, of, of course, uh, that this uh, should be taxed. Uh, what is your stand on this? Uh, do you have any additional idea how we may bridge what we're talking about uh, in the beginning of this action? Maybe something additional, but in the first thing, yep. what is your thing about robotization? And maybe if you think something else is also can be a good thing. Yeah, I was not a big fan of Bill Gates uh, as well. Then I watched the uh, documentary on Netflix uh, and changed uh, my mind a bit. Then he brought us a pandemic and then I changed my mind again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but this one is good. Um, I think uh, this one is really good. Um, adding a bunch of robots uh, to repetitive tasks uh, countries and uh, and will will stay without uh, tax income and in uh, some countries this tax income is really uh, used for um, for country to prosper and uh, better highways better i don't know um, better infrastructure in cities so um, i think uh, this is important money to still uh, come uh, come in country tax and i think uh, Taxating uh, uh, robots uh, is uh, makes sense. I like the idea. Actually, I read uh, this article two years ago, I think, uh, and 
it, it brought uh, some new perspective into thinking uh, of uh, of really jobs and this economy of uh, taxation. Okay, uh, and for the last thing, uh, the final remarks I would like because we are already a little bit behind the schedule. Uh, first, Tomislav, if you can just say in one or two sentences, uh, for the final remark, I would like to ask you, uh, would you like to add something to this topic uh, we did not, not talk before? And after this panel, do you think uh, we should be more or less afraid of, for the jobs of tomorrow? No, I wouldn't be afraid. If you are e at least uh, a bit uh, intrigued and uh, like to learn something on a daily basis, I wouldn't be afraid. Because, again, AI learns on previous contexts. So even the world will uh, change on a daily basis. So AI will evolve, but somebody needs to train AI, as Nenad said. Programming, okay. Programming will, again, be a little bit uh, obsolete because programming can be done. But programming of new algorithms and uh, providing new features is something still need, uh, which needs creativity. But putting a lot of algorithms to create a solution is something we did see with even ML, not AI, 10 years ago, based on, on top of the stack overflow. So I wouldn't be afraid uh, if you are at least a bit uh, interesting to learn on a daily basis. So lifelong learning is something I'm quite supportive. And I do see that any business today is a data driven. So it needs to be also lifelong yes. learning. Okay, uh, Nenad, maybe you would like to add something. And like I said, do you think we should be more or less afraid for the jobs of tomorrow? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm actually afraid uh, now that I think of it, uh, because uh, <laughs> I like to talk yeah. about this topic. Uh, but uh, we said a lot, uh, freeing up the time to do creative things. And as you said, uh, we sometimes like to do uh, repetitive things. Uh, they are building confidence that you did something. Uh, they. They. They are. They, they are good uh, for us uh, and our, our self-esteem and not everyone is curious and likes to read like to research new things uh, probably small percentage of entrepreneurs or somebody who is uh, who wants uh, always to strive and get better in his career is so i'm afraid of uh, we already lost middle class uh, i think and uh, now we are segmenting on uh, creativity um, so I don't know how that, that will play out. Um, segmenting and labeling people, you are creative, you are non-creative, your job will be get uh, obsolete because you're working uh, on this boring, repetitive task is not something um, I would like uh, to hear a lot in this uh, new world. But uh, definitely we are still in control, which is a good thing. Uh, and as you said, uh, we are still far away from general purpose AI. So at least we will live in... Uh, Hopefully, uh, nice world. <laughs> so let's uh, let's enjoy. Thomas, it. Yeah, Thomas, I, I want, I want to just to say one uh, comment, and yeah. this was topic also uh, based on uh, first election where Trump won uh, about uh, one of the let's say filthiest industry they had in the U.S. and it's a coal. And there was one small city in U.S. which was completely uh, depending on the coal mines, and all the people were uh, coal miners there. So everybody's working there. And then uh, previous government did shut down all of it. And everybody was afraid what they will do. And what happened? They brought uh, IT trainers and they taught them how to do the programming mm -hmm. and etc. Now they have a better health care. They are not uh, in the mines. They have better paychecks and they are uh, working uh, shorter daily and uh, essentially uh, they are more healthier and happier now, so it, it will still evolve. Maybe some people didn't have a chance to get it, so this is maybe that equality with uh, basic income, which, which, which may come. I hope it will come during our time, but with some of the other alleviation on the taxing okay. side, but still. Um, if we help somebody to learn something new, uh, we will see that a lot of people didn't have a chance to learn and evolve. Still, there will be some people who don't don't like to learn and who likes to have something repeatable. But you always have janitors, etc., which can't be done automatically. Some small repairs, etc., etc. So there will always be work which needs to be done, and it is repeatable. 
Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you both of you. I think this is, was excellent panel because we talk a lot of different things. And I think that this topic is very important to talk uh, all the time, uh, especially from the tech point of view, who understand a little bit more. But I personally see both of you not only as a technical, because you have a strong technical background, but you have a variety of your uh, inf uh, interest, which can help you to understand these, these things. Uh, thank you, uh, Nea. Thank you, Tomislav, uh, for joining us. Uh, we are so shortly, uh, shortly uh, having a, a small break, two minutes break only. And we are starting with the last uh, mastermind interview with Olivia Gambelin. Uh, and she's going to uh, talk about importance of ethical AI, do AI dream of a lifecycle shift. And basically, uh, Anita Jovic, uh, who is a uh, founder and president of AI Serbia Foundation, she's going to be the one in charge uh, in uh, doing this mastermind interview. If you have some of you have time, uh, stay with us, and we are going to tackle one additional very very important thing, and that's ethical AI. Thank you both for coming once again, and I hope to see you Thank both you. very soon. I'm coming to Zagreb in two weeks, so basically be there, uh, and I hopefully I will also come to Novi Sad to visit you and. In the in the next two year, uh, two weeks as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.